map 2 of this best of 3. And spawning down in the bottom left hand position of Yonsu, the pink Terran player, representing Max Flow, it's so. And his opponent, spawning to the top right, the red Zerg player, representing evil geniuses, none other than Jadon. Jadon currently 1-0 up in this best of three, which means that if he wins this, he goes on to face Elza in the finals. And that's certainly where he's going to want to be. Can he do it though? Or can Sol force the ace game and actually give Jadon his first defeat in this tournament so far? For the moment, Sol opting not to go for the wall off. Slight difference to the first game. Meanwhile, Jadong probably going to go hatch first yet again. He's done it most games and especially in a best of three he should feel completely safe doing so. Drone goes to take the natural base just as expected. We should see the spawning pool start up relatively soon. Just waiting to see exactly when he goes for it. Potentially Jadong may opt to go for the gas first before the pull, but not going to do so. Delaying speed in order to get out faster lings and also those faster queens for the better economy. So, going to be going for Reaper yet again. And Yonsu is a nice map for a Reaper opening because of this little cliff ledge. You can get up into the main base and harass nicely. Decent amount of cliff around the natural also provides perfect avenue for escaping. And therefore, things should be relatively good for Sol who for the most part is opening identically to game number one. The next tell will be if we see the second reaper or not. And that's going to be a really important thing to keep an eye on for because one reaper is very, very different to the two. So two coming down. So two reapers, it's looking to do more damage. It's probably going to be followed up with an additional four hellions to try and poke, to try and prod. If it was just the one reaper, it's mainly for scouting, and just to attempt to get some decent damage down. So now expanding off the back of this, so looking fine there, nothing too crazy. Just a very normal opening out of Seoul. And Jadong opening pretty standard as well. Does have these four lings in position, already harassing that Reaper. His key aim, just as in game number one, is to prevent this Reaper from getting any damage down before the Queens get out, which will be in a much better position to actually start defending against the Reaper aggression. The other interesting thing to see is that Sol, he's sitting there, again, keeping this second Reaper back at home on that ramp, doesn't want to be trying to put on too much pressure, instead wanting to just defend against stuff. But despite that, this Reaper definitely needs to have a look at his work because two lings have made it up into the main base. And they're gonna start dealing some nice damage. Admittedly, nothing too crazy, but picking off an SCV is never a bad thing early on and shouldn't ever really be achieved. Third CC is now started up at the natural base. Jadong did not manage to get the scout down on that, so he's unaware that this third is quite as greedy. Still though, good control at the moment, coming down from Sol. He's keeping this Reaper alive. He did lose it in the first map and he's going to be adamant that that doesn't occur again this game because if it goes down, that's when he starts running into some serious problems. Doesn't have a stronger harassment as the follow-up with those four Hellions and two Reapers. Interestingly though, it's adding in a third Reaper now into this mix as well, so really going to be trying to get a lot of harassment and a lot of map control down with this. And by getting that harassment and map control, it means that taking his third is going to be a lot safer. Because generally, if you're defending, you're not going to be attacking your opponent. And that's really what Soul is banking on and what most Terran players are banking on when they go for this style of build. Picking away at that third base, not going to be able to kill it anytime soon because obviously third hatch takes a fair bit of beating and Reapers and Hellions both very inefficient against it. Three Queens coming over. 
have gone off creep, which allows a couple of shots to go down more than Jadong would have ideally wanted. Doesn't have actually any energy for a transfuse as of yet, so that queen will die. Third and fourth Hellion joining in with this push. Those three lings tirelessly wearing away at those rocks, doing as much as possible. Still pressure continuing on. Jadong being forced to add in a couple more Zerglings already with a fair few on the field up at 23. Doesn't want to take any damage from this if he can avoid it. Still, those Hellions have to be careful because otherwise they will get surrounded by the Lings and that's precisely what Jadong does there. Able to pick off a good number of them. Gonna get all of the Reapers as well. Very nice control there with the Zerglings coming around from behind. And things are looking very, very good for him. Only two Hellions remain, and that is not enough to be threatening to Jadong at this point. Third hasn't yet floated down to the actual third base yet. Soul instead keeping it as part of that wall off to make sure things are nice and safe. He can't get attacked by a Zergling Rumba or anything like that. But Jadong, in no rush to try and take down his opponent, just happily knocking out these rocks, adding in the Bailing Nest. Which is a variation from game number one. And of course, getting that Bailing Nest earlier means that he can deal with the infantry quicker, but he's going to get the Mutalisks later as a result. Scouting Overlord, going to get taken down. Jadong, fine though, he's got a fair few still in the bank, so not going to get supply blocked or anything like that. Still, we've got everything looking. Fairly safe for Jadong. Adding in that Spire now is going to be going up into Zergling Baneling Mutalisk yet again. Those Hellions attempting to push back creep, but not really much they can do with just the two of them. Not worth spending a scan to push it back at the moment, especially when Jadong has just so many active creep tumors on the map. Pushing down the center also, pushing around the left, taking up these rocks. Preparing to secure up a fourth base. Got the macro hatch on the way down. Meanwhile, Sol, he's got the 1 1 upgrades, about two thirds done. Adding in the armory as well to start 2 2 up. First few medevacs hitting the field, and his third has now been secured, and the first few SCVs mining there. Neither player really doing anything too aggressive as yet, and that's reflected in the resources lost. Less than a thousand on each side. But the inevitable 2 medevac timing push with 1-1 one, one and Stim coming across the map now for Sol. Just needs to be very careful not to lose his entire army here because if he does he's going to be running into some pretty major problems. Zerglings now charging forward, the Bailings ready to get the wrap around. Good start of step micro from Sol but just a lot of stuff for Jadong at the moment. He isolates a small group of infantry. The Bailings though not able to get any magnificent connections yet. So all get shut down fairly efficiently, but the remaining marines can all get cleaned up by those zerglings without much trouble. Meanwhile, so third base still running nicely. First few mutalisks just hitting the field now for Jadong. That takes him up to 10 muters. Going to be looking to deal with these medevacs relatively quickly. The lings and muters can deal with a small number of marines very efficiently. Still the Mutalisks chasing down though. Any medevacs that get taken down at this early stage is exceptionally annoying and not really something that you want to have to contend with. Down goes. Couple more medevacs, a few more getting very low on HP. Soul having to go into a full retreat. Getting up into that bunker just to try and survive this onslaught. A couple of Widow Mines do bow up. If they get some big detonations, it could be huge, but nothing massive. Jadong breaches the natural base, continues this push forward, has the two overseers now to grant detection in order to pick away at any more Widow Mines, and Sol is starting to lose a couple more SCVs. A lot of damage coming through, and Mutalisks are able to start really working through the worker camp. This push should be shut out as reinforcements start trickling in, but already some nice damage done. 15 SCVs killed compared to no drones lost. Jadong is up at 74 drones, he's fully saturated, hasn't started on a fourth yet, instead just starting to raise up that Baneling count, getting ready to continue on with this aggression, 
and is probably going to be targeting the third base next. So, is very limited in the amount of defense he's got, specifically in the defense against the Banelings. Only four Widow Mines at the moment. That isn't going to be ideal to try and stop a big play from Jadong if he wants to go for it. And considering he's already at 13 Banelings with four more on the way, that seems what he's looking for. Soul moves forward, the Banelings come crashing through. The Widow Mines not getting any magnificent hits yet. And the Mutalisks closing down a lot of this distance. Down goes most of Soul's army. The Medivacs trying to retreat. And that was just a beautiful opening for Jadong to exploit. Soul moving a bit too far forward. And the damage is looking brilliant. Soul losing even more work. It's now the Mutalisks going head up against those Medivacs and Marines. A couple of Banelings detonate in the main mineral line. Zerglings taking down the natural base. Soul under half his opponent's supply now. It's looking very good for Jadong to advance 2-0 in this series. So, just waiting now for the relentless dreaming of Zerg units. Jadong, he knows he's got it. GG well played. And Jadong advances 2-0 into the final.